Lord, we thank you for the message of Christmas time. We thank you for the great gift you have given us. Help us to appreciate that gift more this morning as we look into your word. And may we give due praise to you in Jesus' name. Amen. In C.S. Lewis's famous book, The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, the lion Aslan is killed by the white witch on the stone table in place of the young traitor Edmund. The children at first are devastated by this, but then Aslan seems to have come back to life again and they are amazed at what has happened. And the story goes on like this. Oh, you're real, you're real. Oh, Aslan, cried Lucy. And both girls flung themselves upon him and covered him with kisses. But what does it all mean? asked Susan when they were somewhat calmer. It means, says As said Aslan, that though the witch knew the deep magic, there is a magic deeper still which she did not know. Her knowledge goes back only to the dawn of time. But if she could have looked a little further back into the stillness and the darkness before time dawned, she would have read there a different incantation. She would have known that when a willing victim who had committed no treachery was killed in a traitor's stead, the table would crack and death itself would start working backwards. You may remember that when Mary was pregnant and met with Elizabeth, also pregnant, she exclaimed in what we now refer to as the Magnificat about the great re re reversal that was to take place when Jesus came into the world. She talks about the hungry being fed and the rich being sent away empty. Everything was turned to be turned on its head. You know, when Jesus was born, of course, there, there wasn't much to see. People uh, wouldn't have noticed, perhaps, in those days, and wouldn't have known what was happening. Uh, the birth of Jesus was something that was very ordinary to the average person. But in fact, the fact that it was so ordinary makes the whole event extraordinary. Because this baby was a king. Jesus was supposed to be extra special. Hear what Isaiah says about him some 700 to 800 years earlier in his prophecy, which we read a little earlier. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in the land of deep darkness, a light has shined. So this great light was obviously going to turn things around from the darkness that had been there and it was going to meet the needs of people who were lost in the darkness. The more we hear of the news, the more we realize how dark is the world that we lived in. And if you're a student of history, you will know that from uh, reading the history books. But even looking around today, we see riots and upheaval around the world. We see persecution of religious and political identities. We see the invasion of Ukraine. In 2019 to 2020, there were 245 deaths in Australia due to assault. It was the highest level in 15 years. In 20, uh, 2020 to 21, 23,000 people in Australia were in hospital due to assault, mainly from males. On the 31st of May, even this year, there was a news report that in 22 weeks, 20 women had been killed. We realize how dark the world can be. And we see too that Jesus comes into the world as the Prince of Peace to bring light into the world. And often it's not just the evils of this world, but also the distractions which lead us away from God. There are so many things to take us off in different directions these days. We are, of course, shocked by the evils of the world very often, especially when murder comes close to home or to a community. And we also mourn the passing of people whom we have known, perhaps from our youth as we've grown up, even people that we don't know. We televise the funerals of significant people. And we recognize in those funerals that the, the frailty of human life 
and that we seem to be living into, in a society that's somehow looking for some sort of solidarity, something to base life upon, some sort of meaning, some sort of anchor points in life. But a world that is often reluctant to embrace the one who actually provides those things, those anchor points, those foundations. Isaiah says, for a child has been born to us, a son has been given to us. How remarkable it is that God meets the world's problems not with a display of force, not with war or offensive strikes, not even with an ideology, but with a person. And that person is a small, vulnerable, humble baby boy. Imagine if this lesson had been learned by the world's leaders since then. How different would things be today if nation had taken God's approach? How different would our relationships be with one another? Isaiah, in the Old Testament, seven, eight hundred years before, uh, talks about this child who was to come says various things about this child. First was that authority rests upon his shoulders. When Jesus grew to be a man, of course, he demonstrated that authority, the authority of God himself. He healed the sick. He raised the dead. He delivered people from demon possession. He commanded storms to stop and walked on water. Even his teachings were recognized as having authority to them. He spoke with conviction. He spoke with confidence. And people saw the difference and heard the difference. You see, if we want to know solidarity and purpose in our lives, if we want to have a true foundation, if we want to have purpose in life, then this man's values, the values of Jesus Christ and that his teachings have stood the test of time. And even those people who reject it often find they are living by them. His teaching about loving our enemies still carries the ring of truth and the ring of authority about them. And so this baby is also named by Isaiah as Wonderful Counselor. His wisdom, you see, would transcend, transcend human wisdom, for he brings God, the Creator's perspective, to human life. He brings a worldview that is different. Isaiah also refers to him as the mighty God and the everlasting Father. Have you ever wondered how, have you ever thought how remarkable that is? In Jewish scriptures, in the Old Testament, the Hebrew writings of the Old Testament, that it should refer to a child and a son as mighty God and everlasting Father. Therein you've got the, the idea of the Trinity and the, the divinity of, uh, of Jesus Christ. He also is referred to as the Prince of Peace. As I've said, there's never been very much peace in the world. If you go back over the years, it's, a, it's really almost a handful of years, maybe 15 years, and I reckon there have probably been conflicts elsewhere in the world anyway. It's only been in the, the world where these things have been reported. So there's never been very much peace in the world. And everyday news bears out that the human race cannot find peace by itself. Even the other day, you find it in the community. You can find it around here. Lisa and I went down the street to have a cup of coffee and we're sitting out on the, on the uh, footpath, on the table out on the footpath. The car's going past, the beeping of pedestrians because they're getting too slow walk, walking across the, the road. People were frustrated and you're thinking, you know, a lot of these people are on holidays. What's, what's the matter? Haven't they wound down yet? Don't they know that this is supposed to be a season of peace and a season of joy and a season of goodwill? Uh, and people were pushing other people out of the way, getting into shops and, and all of this thing. People, people don't have peace within themselves. Not only is there war among nations, but people are not at peace deep down. And most would not even understand that concept of being at peace with God, who is our very creator, who knows how we should live, who knows what is best for us, who knows what our purpose is, even better than we know ourselves. 
And yet with this child who comes into the world, there is the promise of peace through faith in him. Peace with God, peace deep down within, and the peace with one's neighbor on, in everyday life and across the nations. Isaiah says, his authority shall grow continually and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. What would be the guarantee of all this? Well, Isaiah tells us that the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The zeal of God, Yahweh, will do this. In other words, God's enthusiasm will ensure that this comes to pass. And if you've got the creator of the universe deciding on something, then you've got to know it's going to happen. <laughs> so, okay, you say, all right, so the God of the universe is going to make all this peace happen. Where is it? We've just been saying that the world's not at peace with each other. There's, there's war going on at, the at this very moment. Where is it? Where's the peace that the angels proclaimed? What's happened to it? Where's the justice? Where's the righteousness? Where is the great reversal of circumstances of darkness, of light coming into darkness? Well, I can show it to you. I could show it to you time and time again. I could introduce you to people whose hearts have been dark and yet have found light within them. People who have been addicted, who have changed their lives around. People who have had troubles with not only addictions, but things within their own lives that they've been unhappy with. Maybe it's anger problems or some other problem within their life. And they have found their lives touched by God and God's spirit has come into their lives and they have found that they have changed. Not always easily, but over a period of time they have changed. And I've seen some people who have changed remarkably, who have been really difficult people to get on with. And somehow God has touched their life and they've suddenly realized that they need God's spirit within them. They need forgiveness. And... Almost overnight, they've changed and become from hardened people, difficult to get on with, to some of the most lovely people you'd ever meet. God is there to change the lives of people who are willing to come to him and to open their lives to him. And this man, Jesus, touches the lives of people. During his lifetime, some turned their backs on him and mocked him. Others ignored him and still others put him to death. There is still that attitude in society. But for those who entrust themselves to him, there is healing of body and mind and emotions and spirit. There is a new direction in life. There is a new purpose in life. There is a new foundation to life. Life takes on light instead of darkness. And the forgiveness of sins was declared to people the burden of sin and the burden of guilt is dealt with. And even a tax collector, the, the most, uh, most hated of people in Jesus' day, the tax collector volunteered to repay ten times over anyone who had cheated him. After a short time, just after having a meal with Jesus, he sat down and his life was transformed. Yes, the world is still in a mess. It certainly is. Still people ignore him and his teaching, and others are quite hostile, and that hostility, I notice, is growing in society at any mention of Jesus. But for those who receive him, those who receive Jesus into their lives, God has promised adoption as his children, to be members of his family. That's got to be the greatest thing available that you could even think of, to be adopted into the family of God as his child. And through Jesus Christ, we can have the most precious things that we associate with the Christmas story of hope and love and joy and peace, which are the symbols of the Advent candles. Hope, which is the assurance of the presence of God, a sharing of his glory in heaven. The hope is something future, but it's not just a vague longing. It's a certainty and an assurance 
It's only called hope because it's in the future, but in the Bible, hope is always an assurance. There is love, the love of God, which is poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit to know the love of God, to know that we are loved and that nothing can separate us from that love. There is joy. Jesus talks about joy being in you and that your joy may be complete. So it means that even though sometimes we may not always be happy about events, deep down we have a joy because we know that we are God's person, that we're God's child, and that we know that one day that hope, that assurance will come to pass, will come to fruition, and that even in this life we can know the presence of God with us, Emmanuel, God with us. And Jesus says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. If you've got God as the one who loves you, you are a child of God, then you know that whatever happens to you in this life, whether it's illness or persecution or whatever it might be, whatever you go through in this life, you know that ultimately God has your back and that one day you will be with him. One day you will see his glory. One day you will enjoy all that this baby in the manger came to show us. Now I want you to notice that the statement of the, of the angels to the shepherd was not that there would be peace for all people, but for all upon whom God's favor rests. And God favor, God's favor rests on you if you will accept his son as your Lord, the one in charge of your life, and as your Savior, the one who forgives you for the things that separate you from God. And then hope and love and joy and peace are yours for the accepting. Forgiveness and a fresh start are offered then to all humankind as the gift of Christmas through the cross and through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And these are not promises just for when we die. These are the experiences for today and they make a difference to how you live. For you and for me, right now, this day, as we commit our lives to Jesus Christ. Stuart Briscoe, who is a notable preacher, once said, the spirit of Christmas needs to be superseded by the spirit of Christ. He said, the spirit of Christmas is annual. It comes and goes. But the spirit of Christ is eternal. It is there forever. The spirit of Christmas is sentimental. It's a surface level. But the spirit of Christ is supernatural. It is deep and it continues with you. The spirit of Christmas is a human product. But the spirit of Christ is a divine person. And that, he says, makes all the difference in the world. So today, may you know the Christ who will turn your life around and give you that hope and love and joy. This Christmas time, a joy and peace and love that will last forever and ever. May you have a wonderful Christmas. God bless you.